So today we're going to rig my Cessna 180. Uh, the first things you want to do is you want to set the eccentric bushings in the wing root up here. And you want them set in such a way that the thick part of the bushing is on the inside and the thin part is on the outside. In other words, the bolt is on the way out. Or, let's see if I can do this here. I'll show you. If you can see that in there, see that? So the, the bolt is out. Now the trick is to um, move both eccentric bushings. You can only work one against the other so, so much. So you gotta move them both together. There's an eccentric bushing, how it looks. And that's going to be our first step in the rigging of the Cessna 180. So now we have our eccentric bushing set at neutral. I had to put a few extra washers down here because the bolt was shanking out. But we got, and so that's bolt out, thick side in, right up there. So we got our, our uh, eccentrics at neutral. Now we put our flaps at neutral to the fairing right put our yokes at neutral now if your yokes are not neutral there's a turn barrel between the yokes up inside here get to that later but maybe we're hoping that they were set right once so we set our ailerons at neutral now we have to rig our ailerons to our flaps with our control yokes in the neutral position. Step three, two, one, two, one. So another thing we're checking on the rigging too is to make sure that the flap rods in your flaps are a specific length as called out in the service manual. And depending on your year and model, they, they come a little bit different. We're using eight and 53 64 which is somewhere around just about seven eighths it's either eight and seven eighths or because this is a 182 wing it's eight and 53 64 between center line of the bolt and this bolt so we're just making sure those are correct because when we we're rigging it and we got the ailerons all correct. We're a little bit off of one wing tip more than the other. So we're just making sure everything's square prior to our rigging. Ailerons. So another one I want to bring you up on is the rigging of the ailerons. So after your flaps are set, push rods are set, and your cable tension is set. Now make sure on your flaps that when you're when your flaps are up, check the tension on the up cables of your flaps. When your flaps are down, check the tension on your down cables. A lot of times when you have flaps all the way down, your up cables may be a little slack. That's fine. But you want to make sure the tension is correct in the position your flaps are in. So check your flaps tension when the cable's down. When the flaps are down, check the down cable. When the flaps are up, check the flap up cable. Now, once that is set, then we're going to set our ailerons. Now, what you want to do is you want to come out here and you want to set your bell crank to neutral. And neutral is when that bell crank is right in the middle. It's not quite in the middle there. It's like right there. So once your bell crank is in the middle and your aileron and your control yokes our level right around in there and you've got your bell crank in the neutral and the other bell crank in the neutral roll your ailerons over and you should hit this stop and then walk over to the other side of the plane and check the stop on this side to make sure it is hit as well and then go the other way. You can see it's just a little bit off. Sometimes you'll get a little sponge in there because one is bottoming out before the other. I think the other side's hitting just a little bit before this side. It's, 
it's a uh, game of give and take. Once that is set and your bell crank is in neutral like that, then make sure that your ailerons are in neutral. Set your cable tensions all the way around and um, make sure your yokes are in neutral. Now, as you go and set your cable tensions, you'll have to tension them, carry through, and then both the cables going up to the control yoke. Uh, a little bit at each time, just to keep everything in, in um, tension and square. Once that's all set, then set your push rods and your ailerons to match your flaps. And you should be pretty close. Sometimes you gotta do like a little tweaking afterwards Make sure your control yokes are neutral. The, the, um, the uh, chain turn barrel, you should think, would never have to be changed because once somebody set it, it should be pretty good to go. But sometimes there too, you need to adjust that um, turn barrel to move your control yokes in and out. Okay, there we go. So another thing you want to check out too is wing twist. It's always nice to know if your wing is twisted. These wings have been rebuilt and stuff, so I'm just going to check the wing twist. There's also this drawing right here. It's in a later <coughs> 100 series service manual, and it shows you how to build this cool little tool. And basically what you do is, I got my smart level here, and I'm going to put it up between the wing root and out here, um, it should be the same. This is reading about 9.9910. And then what should remain the same is when you take, and I just remove this, the long one here, and I come back out here, and if I put this up to my wing, I should see 9.9, 9.6, it's pretty, 9.7. So it's pretty close and that indicates I got about a three degree twist. And I checked it on the other side and it checked out pretty good. So I'm pretty confident the wings are pretty straight. You know, a point here, a point there is probably not gonna make too much difference. So I know I got straight wings and that's a good thing. So we got it all rigged up, and uh, we're just putting the inspection panels back in. Ailerons and flaps are neutral. We checked our push rod length here, checked our cable tensions. Watch out when you uh, adjust your eccentric bearings, sometimes it'll affect your cable tensions as well. So, and it always takes, you got the carry through cable, and then you have each cable go running up to the yoke and you just sort of got to tweak on one and tweak on the other until they finally line up. We got this side lined up really good, you can see, and this side, but it doesn't match the wingtip here. A lot of times the ailerons will be below the wingtip, but this one, I'm not sure why, this aileron, it's got a little whoop in it. Uh, sometimes when they put them together, they don't quite skin them right and that'll happen and then when they put the outboard tip on there they may not have put it on quite straight a lot of times when you put that outboard tip on it's worth putting the aileron on and the flap and making sure it's all straight before you rivet it but and it could also be I don't know it's it's kind of strange so we checked our cable tension set all our cable tensions 20 to 40 or 30 to 40 to 50 I think it was what it is and they're eighth inch cables on the main controls and then your uh, flap cables check them check the up cables when the flaps are up and check the down cables tension when the flaps are down so anyway our eccentrics are in neutral everything's rigged up we got our controls yokes looking really nice and straight Pulled my panel out so we could get back there. Everything's safetyed. And uh, now we're gonna go out and fly. See how she goes. I hope she just flies straight. <clears throat> but you never know. And then from here on out, 
we'll just adjust our eccentrics depending on we'll go out and do some test flying do some stalls and slow flight see how the she does and cruise and all that so looking good well we got the airplane totally rigged went out and test flew it flies great uh pretty much hands off straight ahead our eccentric bearings are set at neutral we did uh wash out the left wing maybe a half a flat is all a lot of times too you can tell right in here whether or not your wing is washed in or out by the uh, flexing of this panel up here kind of look at that a lot of times when you're looking at an airplane to buy or otherwise you want to um uh, take a look in those wing roots and see where those eccentric bushings are set like I said this one's got a particular the the end of the ailerons always have like a little bit of a, a swoop to them this one doesn't line up so much and I think it's because when it was rebuilt it has like a little bit of a curve in it but uh, we got her flying straight uh, hands off really pretty nice check the wing incident wing instance was good so be sure to check your manual on the procedure for um, rigging and make sure you check all your cable tensions after rigging to make sure that they are uh, correct anyway uh, it's always nice to rig an aircraft and have it fly straight it's amazing a lot of times they just get wings get put on and people go fly and that's the way they think it should fly but once it's rigged correctly uh, it's a it's a pleasure to fly and uh, we're just doing a little uh, inspection 7479 Charlie checking out so one of the things I forgot about was talking about the uh, rigging of the elevator and the rudder be sure just to check the manual I'll tell you exactly how to do it but I'll give you a quick rundown the elevator let's start there is controlled the the travel of the elevator is controlled by there's two stops this is the rear bulkhead and there's two stops here and the bell crank sits here and it hits these stops there's a hole through each of those stops and on each side of that four-sided block is a little bit different distance from the center of the hole so you can turn these blocks to get your um, to get your travels once it's set it should be set for life check your travels on your elevator once the travels on your elevator are set and you know that's true then it's time to set your elevator tension because it's a closed loop of the bell crank up front and the bell crank in the back take your turn barrels and turn them up and get them equal so each cable looks equal and then push the control yoke all the way to the firewall the forward part of the control yoke should be about a half inch to a quarter inch off the face of the firewall once that distance is set with your control yoke evenly tighten your turn barrels up until you get the proper tension check the uh maintenance manual for the proper tension on your elevators now getting to the rudder the rudder is set by the rudder stops in the tail of the plane and here again if those rudder stops are set right the travel usually never changes so those are set right here these are your little rudder stops and your rudder hinges here and bumps up against those so your rudder is set check your rudder travel once that is set we know that the cable tension on the rudder cables themselves is actually controlled by the spring tension you have two springs that are located in the very front up here buried down in there pain in the ass and one's short one's long the long one goes on the left the short one goes on the right make sure those springs are good there's little tabs that the springs go into and you got to check those little tabs make sure they aren't bowling out or anything like that but it's a real pain in the ass to like uh to uh change those things or move them here's the long one 
then here's the short one. There's the part number for the short one, and there's the part number for the long one. Make sure those springs are correct. A lot of times people go to any hardware and pick up some springs and screw you all up. Get those springs in there. Now, the trick there is look at the turn barrels that are back at your rudder. They should be the short ones. Uh, I think they're two and a half inches, two inches. They're the shorter ones. Make sure they're both the same size. I've run into that problem too. Um, once you've got those set, turn them until the threads are barely into the barrels on each side. Come up front and then check your pedals. What you want to do is check your pedals and make sure they look right, feel right, and are set right. Now when you press on your pedal, make sure that they don't run into the firewall. Also get in there. They should be standing pretty straight up. And if you have your turn bells about that length, it should be pretty close. Get in there and check and make sure they aren't running up against the firewall. Make sure you're getting full travel at your back and all that. Also, jack your tail up in the air and disconnect your tail wheel and then rig your rudder. Once your rudder's set, reconnect your tail wheel. Get that tail wheel out of the, out of the, thing, out of the equation. Once your rudder is set without the tail wheel connected, hook the tail wheel up and set your tail wheel to match your rudder so you're steering straight. Don't forget, don't, do, don't neglect your tail wheel. It's the little wheel in the back and we all love the little wheel in the back. And that's about it. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, you know where I'm at.